Gossip brings death. And guess who it brings death to? Not to the person you're talking about. Not to the person you're exposing. Not to the person that you're talking about online or that you're texting about this situation behind their backs. Gossip brings death to the one spreading it. It does. It brings death to you. Hello and welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. Okay, I'm excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about gossip and it's something that's really been on my heart because I see it run rampant, especially on social media. And I just felt really convicted to come on because when you are a gossiper in the business world, it doesn't look good. It makes you look bad. And, you know, people who are bad, they don't need other people to tell people that. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about that today. I'm actually going to be like basically preaching for a couple minutes. But first, I want to tell you my story and my heart behind this. Okay. So I was actually nominated. Biggest gossip in high school. I know it's not something I'm like, I'm proud about because like, who wants to go around and tell people that? Like, you know, I would, I would rather would have gotten like most likely to succeed, which I think I ended up being pretty successful or, you know, prettiest. I got freaking biggest gossip. Okay. Like I, not a proud moment for me or for my mother. Okay. But (laughs) here we are. And the quote in the yearbook, is me going, it's not my fault that everybody tells me their business. And I truly thought that because I'm like, hey, like everybody tells me stuff and then somebody would be talking about the situation and I would say, oh yeah, well, here's actually what happened, right? So I just had the tea on everybody. And here I am being labeled biggest gossip. And it really hurt me. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna get called that, I guess I'll just gossip. And then, you know, as I get into my business and career, find out really quick, like, "Mm -mm, that ain't going to work. I don't like being gossiped about. So I got to stop gossiping about other people. And my pastor says this, she says, labels are fables. Mm. So when people start labeling you, those are just stories that they're projecting on you. And I rebuke that. And when you are the person who's labeling other people, you're just putting your stories on people. Nothing is truth. Nothing is fact because you're sharing things from your personal perspective. I want you to think about gossip like this. When I heard this analogy, it was game over for me because it's so true. And with your tongue, you create life or death. I want to be the person creating life. I know if you're listening into this right now, you want to be the person creating life. Gossip. Once you've done it, think about toothpaste. When you squeeze toothpaste out, can you get that toothpaste back in that tube? No, it's out there and it's staying out there. That's exactly what gossip is. You can't say something talk about somebody, talk about a situation, talk about a client that did you wrong publicly and go and retract it. You can't go and take those words back. The damage is already done. We reap what we sow. And that seed you have in your tongue, your words are seeds. So the words that are coming out of your mouth about that person, about that situation, if you're reaping that back, how do you feel about that? It doesn't feel good. So speak life over someone. Even when, you know, I had a recent situation come up and I I honestly, I went online and I was like, hey, do you guys like to hear about situations where maybe somebody did you wrong, right? Or like I had a bad tenant situation. Do you guys want to hear it? And 
the majority of people actually said yes. And my really close friends actually texted me on the side and was like, Kayla, don't do it because you can't take that back once you've said it. And it says more about you than it does about the person who did it. And so I was like, whoa, that's true. What good will come of me sharing these situations? And I really had to do a heart check because I was like, well, the number one thing I wanted to accomplish by sharing this publicly was outing her publicly. And the reason why I wanted to out her publicly was so she couldn't screw over any other investor. And so I'm trying to control and manipulate the situation, which that's not good. That's a spirit of fear, right? Because I have to understand that like, hey, other investors are adults and they get to make their own decisions about who they're going to help out in life. And you just got to let that kind of stuff go. You can't try to play God in this situation. And what would it look like for me to publicly say that person's name that did me wrong? I mean, I think long-term would be like, oh, well, if you do Kayla wrong, she will publicly out you. And then what does that do for people? It scares them like, oh, okay, I got to really not be myself and really like, oh, maybe just stay away from Kayla because, you know, I don't want to piss her off because it's easy to piss me off. (laughs) But think about that. This is what I did. I said, you know what? That's so true. I'm not going to say anything. I went and wrote out a prayer and I forgave this person that, you know, basically owes me multiple six figures. I forgave them. And I said, you know what? I actually pray that her integrity comes into alignment with the next project she's going to do. I pray blessings over her. I pray a renewal over her mind. And I just straight up went to like the war room for this woman okay, that did me wrong, right? And if I told you guys the situation, all of you guys will be like, dang, that's dirty. And, you know, I'm like, no, you know what? Because you reap what you sow. So I'm gonna speak life over that person. Prayer covers, gossip exposes. Write that down. Prayer covers, gossip exposes. So what do I really want to have happen? I want this girl to get it right. I want this girl to maybe one day have a come to Jesus moment and go, you know what? I'm going to write Kayla a check right now. And so what do I want to do? I want to see blessings over her. Cause if she was in a better financial situation, she wouldn't have put me in this situation period. End of story. She wouldn't. She's making those decisions. She is making out of lack and desperation. And I've been there before, right? Where you're scared. And when you're living in scarcity, you don't make good choices. So what am I going to do? Pray that abundance comes upon her. And boom, that's it. That's the only thing I'm going to say about her is that she is going to be blessed, period. So start going whenever you want to gossip about a situation. Okay, a client did you wrong. Somebody on your staff is annoying you. Your husband is driving you crazy. People owe you money. Prayer has to be your first resort. Because when you go to God in prayer over this certain situation that's happening, you start to renew your mind and you start to see that person like God sees that person. And God doesn't look at any of us as like, you know, oh, I like this person more. This person's done more for me. They've done more right in their life. No, God looks at you like you look at your children. And I have three kids. I don't know how many you have. Tell me in the comments. But I can't pick out a favorite. I love them. They're all so different. They all have their quirks and their good things about them. But it doesn't make me go, I love this one more. I go, I love all of you so much and I want what's good for you. That's how God sees every single one of us. As a child of God, we're made in his image. And somewhere along the way, some of us got evil spirits attached to us. Some of us started believing the lies of the devil and We started to just live out our traumatic selves instead of our best selves with the Lord. And some people are just still trapped in that. And so what we get to do is go, you know what? No, I'm going to see them as God sees them. Does it mean that everybody is going to be left, you know, and you're not going to like see justice when people do things wrong? No, right? But it means go to God and do what he tells you to do. Don't go to your audience. 
and have them tell you what to do. Don't go to your best friend who loves you and wants to protect you and do what they tell you to do, right? Go to God and he will guide you. And I specifically, in this situation, God was like, let it go. Let the debt go. You will be rewarded. Move on. We're not staying any here. We're not staying here any longer. Let's go. And so I heard that. All right. It's going to come back in another way. I'm not going to worry about it. And, and like when that happened, peace came over me and I didn't even have a desire to share the situation, even with family. I really didn't. I was just like, nah, it's over. Like, and normally like the Kayla would be like, oh my gosh, can you believe this girl? Tell all your friends. Like I'd be going backhanded ways of like trying to expose this girl, even if I didn't do it publicly. I don't, I don't, literally don't want people to know now. Cause I'm like, no, you know what? Good things are going to happen to her. She's going to make it right. And you know, I'm just moving on. Proverbs 2019. And I love the Proverbs because it's just full of so much wisdom. Like if you never know what to read in the Bible, just go read Proverbs because, or go read Psalms too, because you're just getting a good mood. So 2019 says, whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. I don't know about you, but I do not want to be known as a simple babbler. I don't want to be known as a simple person. But if you go around slandering other people, revealing other people's secrets, you are known as a simple babbler. Do you want to be that person? Nobody raises their hand, right? So don't be that person. Don't be that person. Say, you know what? I'm going to be Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, I'm going to think on these things. And what I know is that people are sinful so am I. I am not perfect. I've made mistakes before in the past, but you know what? God covers us. He's going to make this right. And I pray blessings over that person. Proverbs 18, 20 from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. Mmm. What kind of fruit do you want to bear that's coming out of your mouth? Gossip brings death. And guess who it brings death to? Not to the person you're talking about, right? Not to the person you're exposing, not to the person that you're talking about online or that you're texting about this situation behind their backs. Gossip brings death to the one spreading it. It does. It does. It brings death to you. I had a situation come up a few days ago where I ran into a woman I know at a networking event I was at, and she brought up a a woman that we know and mutually, and she starts going in on this woman. And the woman's not like a friend, okay? Like I don't necessarily like the person she's talking about. Like I have my own feelings about this person. And she starts going in and then I, I just start agreeing. I just go, I come into agreement with you on that slander. And I, I caught myself, I got home. I felt sick to my stomach because I didn't realize it while it was happening. Like I honestly didn't. I was just like, oh my gosh, yeah. Like, you know, we'll spill the tea. I got home, I felt so disgusted. I called up this specific woman that I gossiped with And I said, I feel so sorry that I came into agreement with you on that stuff. Like we can all have our own opinions, but what I did, I'm going to take ownership. Please forgive me for participating in gossip with you. And like, you know, I just want to move on from this. That's not who I am. And I'm really sorry that I even allowed that to happen. And she was like, oh, don't feel bad. You know, my goodness. Like, no, it's okay. We all get to air like how we're feeling and vent. And I was like, no, no, we don't. Because guess what? With our tongue brings life or death. And I don't want to be the person ever bringing death. And I don't want you to ever think that I'm going to gossip about you behind your back because I'm not. And God is working on me in this whole area. And she was like, I think she didn't know how to respond to me because who does that? Right. But I was like, no, like I am changing And it felt really like, I felt better. I felt at peace about it. And I asked the Lord for forgiveness. I forgave myself. And it's like, let's move on. 
gossip mirrors the values of an inferior kingdom. What is the inferior kingdom? Hmm. I don't want to say his name on the podcast. The enemy. Okay. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. So of course he would use gossip as a scheme in this plan because he's like, Hey, if I can get all these people who are great people to start gossiping and to start slandering and to start getting caught up in the drama, guess what? They're, they're down here with me. Oh, they don't get to get, you know, all the blessings of, of the true Lord. And ooh, I'm just going to get them down here. When we're gossiping, when we're experiencing bad things, we're not experiencing the abundance and the joy that God has for us in our life and in our business right now. So quit it. People that gossip tend to not go to God to pray. They go to their friends to just discuss the situation and discuss it and discuss it and discuss it and actually not change anything in their lives or business. And I see this happen with staff, right? You might get comfortable with somebody on your staff that you start to go like and gossip about another person on the staff or people in your staff are gossiping about another staff member. This recently happened to us. And I was like, no, that's not going to happen. And I just nipped it in the butt. Like that is not how we roll here. If you have a problem with this person, we're going to have an actual sit down meeting and we're going to discuss it all together. And we did clear the air. And I'm like, this doesn't get talked about again because we're not that type of environment. We have a healthy culture. Write this down. Gossip and slander our partners and their offspring is death loss, and destruction. When you gossip, all it's doing is revealing a stronghold in your mind. It creates a pattern of thought that has a demonic stronghold. And when I looked at this, like I was like, okay, that stronghold over me where, that I just could easily just gossip about that person. Guess what? This is a person that does really well business-wise and financially. And in my point of view, I'm like, she's not nice. And so I don't like her. And (laughs) it's really easy for me to go and like compare myself and be like, wow, like, I don't think she should be as successful as she is because, you know, da, 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 da. And guess what? That's revealing about me. It's revealing insecurity. It's revealing a stronghold of doubt And disbelief over my talents, over my ability to go out and create the life that I want to have. And so what did I do? I actually had a deliverance prayer done with my pastor. We've done four now because things like some other stuff will come up like this. It's like, oh, wait, no, no, we're going to rebuke that out of you and replace it with God's truth strengthen myself with God's love and God's character instead of strengthening myself with things of the world, like gossip. If you have undealt with animosity between people, between like old situations, you'll attract bad information about them. You will. It's crazy. I want you to think about this right now. If you have something like, just like it's grudge, it's, and it's deep. It has cobwebs all over it. Like you don't even realize that it's there, but somebody calls you out of the blue. Somebody texts you out of the blue and says, Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? And you're like, Oh, tell me the tea. Let me hear it. Cause I love to hear how bad they're doing. Right. It's gross. It's nasty. Like when you say it like this and like a funny making fun of it way, you're like, Oh God, I feel like crap about myself. Right. So this is the thing. Forgive people because gossip is agreeing with what the enemy thinks about a person. The enemy doesn't like you. The enemy thinks you're horrible and he wants you to think you're horrible too. So he attaches spirits to you and all of the things when you have an open, when you have an open door to it and the open door is unforgiveness. So I challenge you to go through and just forgive people, forgive people and ask God, say, I don't even know all the people that I'm mad at, that I've held grudges over the years, please help me forgive them, bring them to light so I can forgive them, cover that Lord, even people I don't remember. Okay. Because what happens here is you're going to close yourself off to the enemy schemes. And then I want you to decree and declare things of God because you bring things to be by being in agreement with God's word. 
instead of sowing seeds of weeds, which is what gossip is, what do you want? What do you want to sow? You want to sow seeds of encouragement over a person. You are God's ambassador on this planet in your business, in your family, in friendships, at your church. So anytime you open your mouth, what seeds are you going to sow? If you want to bloom in this world, you don't want to sow seeds of weeds. You don't want to sow seeds of weeds. Gossip usually lacks information. It's not telling all the sides of the story. And you want to get to a point where you can speak the truth in love, not your opinion. Because what happens here, this is what's so crazy, okay? If you got a problem with somebody, somebody did you wrong, a client, a business partner, this happens all the time in network marketing, and you want the relationship to continue with this person, you got to go to the person and you got to bring it to light because the enemy can't own what's in the light. So let's bring it up here. Let's look at it at the surface. Let's say, hey, this thing that you did, I feel really hurt by it because you matter to me and I want to continue a relationship with you. So I'm wondering if we can create some agreements around our friendship, our business partnership. Would you be open to doing that? And if they are, come into agreement with what you're going to be available for in that friendship or in that business partnership. You got to partner with what Jesus thinks about people. And I'm not saying to be friends with every single person, but if you believe that, you know, this person that you want to have in your life is God ordained there, you got to look at them as God sees them. Guard your tongue in every conversation you go into, every podcast you're going on, every social media post that you make. Guard your tongue. Decree and declare God's truth over your life. I love Charles Capp's books, God's Creative Power. You could just sit there and just boom, just say it out loud every day. The things that God says about you. How do you think God sees you? How do you see yourself? You got to walk in the way that God sees you. If I'm a child of God. I am pure. I'm innocent. I am loved. I have already been redeemed. So even though I'm not a perfect person, God, God's made my imperfections. He's wiped them clean. You are a royal priesthood. If you walked around today, like you are royalty, like you are God's special people set apart to do amazing things in this world, you'd be walking in your full identity. You'd be having limitless faith. So start to build others up. Proverbs 15, 28, 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. What we say out loud is extremely important. It's extremely important. So when you feel yourself starting to like get angry about a situation, you want to go vent. Remember, you're going to go, no, I'm going to go to the prayer room. I'm going to give that to God. Lord, help me change the way that I'm seeing this person right now and start praying blessings over them. Start asking for wisdom on how God wants you to address this certain situation. And what's going to happen? Guess what? You start doing this, you're building up your unoffendable muscle, okay? I would like to get to the point in my life where I am unoffended. I want to be unoffended by the things and the schemes of this world because you go and you realize this is all spiritual warfare. That human that did that wrong thing to you, it wasn't them in their purest form. It was them with the, some spirits attached to them, but they got some stuff going on. So start praying that they are delivered from those strongholds. If you believe in God, you will change the way you speak, right? I like to say this, I believe, therefore I speak. I'm changed. I'm speaking with a new tune. Mm, so good. Hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you feel like you're like, oh my gosh, like 
there, it goes so much deeper and you're looking for, you know, maybe somebody to do like a deliverance prayer with you. I have an amazing pastor, just DM me the word deliverance and I will give you all of her information, I'm trying to talk her into coming on the podcast as well. So we could talk about all of those things when it comes to spiritual warfare. But for right now, remember, go out there, speak the word of God over your life. Go to your prayer room before you go to anybody in this world. Talk to God first. Love you so much. Bye.